Now, when you prepare for a fight, is there a certain, I don't know, rhythm that you get into or, or like a uh, schedule that you're in to prepare for that? So that's awesome. So like, it's a ritual. Like, okay. I look at it as a ritual that I do. And like every day is the, not the same ritual, but a similar ritual. Okay. Where I try to focus in on different areas like mixed martial arts. Like you want to be able to wrestle, you want to be able to box, you want to be able to grapple, all that stuff. Same thing with real estate. It's like, well, I got to do lead generation. I got to be able to get huh. in front of people. You know what I mean? I got to <laughs> have meetings. I got to, I got to make sales. I have to be able to close. Like you have to have a whole bunch of skill sets and, and turn it into one person. Interesting. So, I, okay. So how do you train in MMA? Like how do you train on each one of those things? You do you allocate time for each one. How does that work? So the cool thing is, and this is what I love about being with the company that I'm with, with Streamline is, you know, we have people in every different area that okay. are just awesome at what they do. And like being a salesperson, you kind of have to be, not all of them, but you have to be a lot of them kind of fall into one. And uh, that's really what I did with fighting was I tried surrounding myself with the best people in a certain craft. Interesting. And that's what I love about this company is that like we have people. And the company like, Streamline. Yeah. Shout out to Streamline. <laughs> so, okay. So when you took your approach to fighting, you wanted to model people that were really good yeah. at whatever their niche was. Absolutely. And you find that with Streamline because they have it streamlined. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what about fighting inspired you? Like, how did you start getting into MMA? Because I feel like that is obviously a big part of your life. And that translates, like you said, it's kind of why you, you got into real estate. You, you drew the connection. Absolutely. So what, where, like, how did you come in with, into the, into the mixed martial arts sport. Yeah. So weird, crazy. I always like joke. I crack is like, I want to be a Ninja Turtle. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Like you really can't make any money being a Ninja Turtle. You know what I mean? Like you got to pick something. Well, you could dress yeah. up on like, YouTube. And Dude, you could go on like uh, Hollywood. Like yeah. they have like those weirdos that dress up sometimes. So you have a choice, do that or become a fighter. Or become a fighter. And you know what? Um, Fighting for me was like something that as a kid, I, I, I just took to because like, you know, you grew up, I was the youngest six kid, so I got beat up every day. Wow. Um, yeah. Growing up without having my father in my life, he passed away when I was a kid. Um, kind of, you get angry and like, you didn't know how to deal with everything. Yeah. I was a bully growing up. Yeah. So you get physical, you get it. Um, so that's kind of how it, it started. You know what I mean? And it was, it was really cool. It was really awesome to start at a certain place where you really had nobody knew who you were and you, you actually got to delay that instant gratification, be productive every day. And what age it. was that? So I would say 18 is when it really started like, man, Were I you to do that. Aggressive growing up? Always. Okay. It was like, was, was there a mentor that came in and was like, this kid is not so bad. Maybe he should be a fighter instead of, like, what was that? There has to be something. There. Yeah, you know what? And that's that's the big thing. Like, everything you do in life, you need a coach. You know what I mean? You do. You need someone, like, and, and look, you don't need a mentor to, to get you everywhere. But, like, if you want to really learn something, you should really try to model somebody. So, I'd say probably the biggest role model at that time, and this was, like, a little bit later when I really started fighting, was Eddie Alvarez. I used to go to the gym and train with Eddie all the time. That name sounds familiar. Why do I? I'm a little disconnected from things, but that sounds like a yeah. So Eddie, is he a local guy. Yeah, Eddie's from Kensington. Eddie is a he was a UFC world champion. He was a Bellator world champion. Bodog world champion. Sounds like a good mentor. Yeah, yeah, he was a great guy <laughs> to follow. He really right. was. So he really taught me. What you know, age were you when you met? I met Eddie. Well, first time I met Eddie was a sophomore in high school. Wow. Okay. I went to Bonner and he went to North Catholic. Um, unbelievable athlete, unbelievable wrestler. What I love about Eddie was like North Catholic, where like tough street kids okay and you know we would get beat by like the prep and LaSalle like you know what I mean like the yeah, schools where yeah. you're not going to find people from Kensington at or, or Darby Township and uh Eddie would smoke these guys like I would oh. just used to love watching them wrestle just to beat like these these kids was um, he a little bit your senior Ed's two years older than me yeah okay yeah so relatively same age group close close so yeah. when you were 18 he was 20 kind of thing and yeah were you both working out the same area, the same gym? So I was doing jujitsu at that time, and I remember I was following Eddie, and I was like, "Man, I want to, I want to train with him." I, huh. what, I was like, always in my head, I wonder what it would be like to train with Eddie Alvarez. And then finally, you know, you reach that point where you're like, the the fear of not doing it overwhelms you more than the fear of doing 